now though uh after move with the early ignite see if that ends up mattering too much here stick say starts to chug his potion and heal right back up here that will be a potion lead for the ad carry is cody sun still holding on to his meanwhile top lane someday getting the push with his scion and darshan does ward for the classic jungler krug trade that we see a lot of the times to see if the enemy jungler is coming up so you uh you don't want your jungler to fall behind the camp early on yeah losing those krugs pretty par for the course these days nobody likes to take them during the first rotation through the jungle they're just so slow they're so time consuming they feel really bad but when you move across the map and the only thing that's left when you can't gank the enemy guy is krugs you're like eh, well exactly we see them trade krugs when krugs are the only thing left that's pretty much the rule of krugs if there's literally nothing else to do you can do krugs yeah it goes from tier one is raptor camp that's where you start yep, and then the, the bottom of the barrel are the krugs meanwhile mid lane ryu uses a lot of mana but he gains this lane priority you can see him uh, posturing very offensively in this lane, uh, super far up, trying to deny who he a little bit and eke out some more pressure. Meanwhile, Darshan does go pretty aggressive himself with the hyper proc. Yeah, talking about positioning yourself very far forward, just getting up on the very edge of the turret range there to make sure that someday is not allowed to have any more control in this lane than absolutely necessary, Sejuani up there taking those Krugs and that ward. Yeah, gonna spy that out. That Krug trade is taking place now and look at that nothing else on the map that's the only reason they're just cleaning it up they've also placed some of the early vision you can see a lot of it is focused on the top part of the map here uh, between mid and top lane and so that means the bottom lanes are just gonna continue to farm Aphromu actually still in the bottom lane he was you know looking for some more of those cues constantly forcing Stixe to dodge as well as you know, think about his mystic shots that he's trying to get out there for the CS. And it has started to take its toll. There are a few more minions on the Hunter Thieves side. Uh, so Stixay can catch up a little bit, but definitely a nice little lead there for the bottom lane. Yep, small lead for them. You've got about one minion waves worth of lead in the mid lane as well there for Ryu up over Huhi and top side. Someday's actually going blow for blow with Darshan, which considering you're up against a Nar, you're up against a champion that it's expected for him to get a lead. That's fantastic. And Nar did use the teleport first, so Darshan went back. He got the long sword and the extra Doran item along with some more sustain in the form of potions. And someday now technically does have the teleport advantage, but probably should have been that way as well. Equal eyes. Well, cross a little bit of a stun onto Cody here. Takes some damage of his own as the explosive charge is strapped up to the top of him. And this is the situation that you want if you're the Hundred Thieves side. When you're drafting these lanes and you're looking for the, the early pushes, they have now Aphromu roaming there on the bard when you saw him going through the river. Welcome Meteos now is daily getting the deep vision now. This is the bonus of having the duo pushing lanes of uh, you know mid and bottom. It kind of gives over this control. They've spotted out Rain over. They can track him now uh, for the majority of the game, and it makes it a lot easier for those lanes to continue to play aggressively. Ooh, speaking of aggressive plays, Ryu getting up in the base of lane over there, utilizing those wards and that tracking that you're talking about to be as much of a nuisance as he possibly can. Biofrost, another stun here onto Cody. Stixay doesn't want to go any further forward, not when Afro can dish out damage like that. Yeah, I mean, with that invade, although Ryu was really annoying for, for Rainover and harassed him a little bit, Rainover was going to go back to base anyway after that, and he did allow Fuji in the mid lane to get a full push on the minion wave, so give up a little bit of that pressure in mid lane. Meanwhile, bottom, we are gonna have an all in. Oh, man, these stuns are just landing time after time from Biofrost. Afro moving Cody Sun gonna be forced back from that one. Cody taking very well. Cut the hot cocoa there to make a little bit better. <laughs> Still gotta be careful though. That's actually my personal favorite bard skin. It makes it super easy to tell when the cocoa is fully done. That's a good point. I can never tell you the other ones are done. Yeah, I don't like, ever play them on a -Ram. You got marshmallows in there, you got the straw, everything's uh, all cooked and ready so you get the full heal. Whereas a lot of the other skins, it just slightly like, yeah. glows. It's a shiny orb, it becomes a shinier orb. It's not shiny, it's actually... My jungler brain doesn't... Nope, work that way. So, uh, right there with you, buddy. <laughs> I'm not well versed in the shrines. Someday, face check the front, Rain over here waiting for him. Tries to use the ulti to get himself away from Rain over, popping the flash to interrupt that immediately. The VC coming down. Someday, trying to flash over the wall, get himself out here, but not today. The first blood for Huhi, the smooth escape from Darshan. 
strategy. Now that they dead body. That was actually one of the smoothest kill side kills I've seen in a long time. CLG execute that very, very well. And we'll note the little interactions here. So, Scion, yes, you're always going to expect the ultimate to get away because it will uh, remove any sort of possible disable. But Rainover flashes right on because he's expecting it. So, that causes the collision, which is going to end the ultimate. And then they have the CC layered right after that, just so nicely. Finishing the kill in time for a Black Cone in the game. So it all really worked out quite perfectly for CLG. Grabbing that first blood. Now they've got this gold lead. But bottom lane had no part in that, and they're just and continuing to farm down here. Slain. Continuing to fall a little bit behind in CS as well. About 10 CS down still, so they do have to be aware that that can't be allowed to become too much of a deficit, especially if you're going to be a Your opponent dropped on us. No, the part of the part of the buff trade-off, though, for as well. This is a package for Courtney, and while early on, you do want to know. Uh-oh. That tricky blue buff juked him. All right, who he's got it now. He's ready to go. He's got the gold rockets. He's got the blue buff. Ryu actually going to be the one to make the first move. So, yeah, even though he does have the golden rockets, your sick fire there for the uh, Ryu with the minion wave control. Oh, made a little thing to the top side. There, Sean backs off. No play really available. And there's what you normally see happen in the first person package every time. He holds it for a while. The threat of it is more dangerous than the actual use because everybody plays back, and he just uses it in lane because there's nothing else to do. Yeah, we may see a little bit more action brewing on the bottom side. We do have the level 6 for Bard. We do have the level 6 for um, Taric as well. So the support ultimates, which are the big game changers down in that lane, uh, are available to be used. And Africa is off and roaming once again trying to look for one of those openings, trying to get that vision control for the bottom side of the map. Cinder Hulk also now completed on terrain over. I mean, he's plenty tanky in these early fights. If they decide to go for one, he could be that front line, providing the health pool of the Cinder Hulk with the armor and magic resistance of the frost armor means that he can get in there and soak plenty of blows before he actually is in real danger. Plus, you've got Biofrost there with the defensive capability of the Terra Cult. So both of these supports have such clutch save potential in this game. It's going to come down to execution. It's going to be all about which one of them is in the right place at the right time and has those interactions mechanically changed. We have to tell. Right now, rain over. We'll set down Over the wall goes Rain over. It's full on 2v2. Ryu going to be in some trouble here. Stunned up. Locked down. More damage from Huhi. Valkyrie forward trying to get the damage down to Ryu here. Biofrost coming in. Flashed into stun. And Huhi's got the kill. Two shot barrage coming through just to make sure, but they don't even need it. CLG snapped the trap shut there onto Ryu and Meteos. They thought they had the extra advantage here with Meteos coming through the lane. Trying to join with Jax, but very good execution. Once again in the early game there for CounterLogic Gaming. And they're looking pretty smooth so far. That was kind of the Ezreal bonus where you get to let your uh, support roam very quickly. Biofrost was able to show up. He flashes the secret of the kill. It does come at the cost of some more damage on that bottom lane turret. But Ezreal able to stay safe. And, and that was one of the big problems for CLG in the game we saw from them yesterday. It seemed like they just got completely dismantled in terms of their macro play and their rotations. So plays like this looking good for them in the squad. So again, this is a replay. Randover was already in the hunt jungle. So he got the, the last go come here for the surprise. He landed the ultimate, then he got the gun. There's the flash from Bioprise who broke up on Eric and able to secure the kill for themselves. Save. Just barely over a thousand gold lead now for Counter Logic Gaming. Medios getting his deep vision down though on Jax. And you know, you were talking about how at the very beginning of this, we were introducing the players and the teams. Zix has been with CLG for a long time, been the coach, the planner, kind of the mind behind all of this for a long time now. And the draft so far seems to be coming together in a coherent plan, right? You've got the Ezreal, like you said, that's able to stay down there and hold his own, allowing Biofrost to roam to set up the plays. You've got the damage potential from Luhi, and CLG seems to have come into this game with a plan in mind, and they're executing to that plan as the end. Yeah, and they're also adapting well to just what's occurring in the game. You can lay the best of plans 
Uh, but League of Legends changes so much from decision to decision, minute to minute in the game. Everything has to be adaptable, and that's one of the biggest things here. You really have jumped on the two opportunities that have shown themselves. The top lane as well as that mid lane. But that does not mean that 100 Thieves are out of this, and they're looking for the play for themselves. He said he just had gotten the deeper vision down already, and now he's going to go to kind of clear out some of the defense of the COD. Remember, they do have a timeout play. I guess with the added defense there, they've called it off, and now Sunday roaming right back up the top doesn't want to be done on the wave. Yep, okay. moving up there to catch that one for himself, working on some of that armor itemization. You can see him going for what appears to be a frozen heart here. Cooldown is very important on Scion. Also, just so useful for making sure that Nars poke is going to be less and less effective as this goes on. You can tell CLG were expecting some sort of play on this big objective. First turret bonus gold uh, would be a big thing in putting 100 Thieves back in there. This bottom turret is the most likely uh, you know, next objective for them to go to. So Rainer were hanging around for a counter gang, waited it out, but obviously we already knew that 100 Thieves had called it off. Sean continuing to maintain that lane control up top side here. Nar with red buff. One of the only things scarier in lane than Nar. Back into his own jungle. Taking a look at where the wards are right now, placed around the match. You can still see a lot of 100 Thieves in the bottom part of the CLG jungle, making sure they're keeping eyes on whoever's rotating around there. If they're coming in for those counter ganks like you, like you were talking about, or even if they just want to march somebody down through there, try to make a play towards bottom lane, they're really looking to keep from safety. Yeah, man, that bottom turn is still this dangling low-hanging fruit here. Only a few more shots. Tristana, one of the best at finishing them off as well with an explosive shot. So you got to think there's still going to be continued focus on this area of the map. Here comes the rest of the thieves. Move up here. Finding in the wall. A little bit of damage on the green over. Thank you. Like the meat. Q plus a single auto attack as long as it's enchanted with a meat. Does give you the electric Q bonus because meat counts as something different. Yes. Ball goes rain over. Meep damage. Yep. Got to get the meeps in there. Medios pulls himself out of that one, but he does pop the ulti there. So should a fight break out really soon here, that Jax is going to be much more susceptible to getting bursted down than you would normally expect him to be. It is one reason why they can't function in sort of that second tier tank that you were talking off about. Tank, like, yeah, sort of like off tank. And not only you were mentioning because you get the help. You've also got resistances in the ulti, but not having that available to you right now. Great, still up for the taking. Mount Drake is covered this time around for you. Pressuring on the mid lane, trying to create a second opportunity potentially for the Thief to go for if they want that turret first blood. And we still have this standoff at the bottom lane. Still just desperately trying to protect the last little remnants of that bottom turret. And Hunt D is very calmly pressure up. You know, they, they aren't rushing anything. They just continue to farm out that quadrant of the jungle, clear out all of the vision, and inflate those vision stores. DLG, good job playing defense around this. When you have your turret sitting at 10% HP for so long, generally, you're going to see the thing go down rather quickly. But because of the rotations they've made, because of the defensive position they've taken, things have gone pretty well for them. Cody Sun, forced back now. They're stunned again, ever so much do run into him, picks up a couple of cups of cocoa there to heal off a little bit of it, gets himself back over about two-thirds HP. He'll continue healing up as he drinks that refill. Sistana versus the Mana Moon and Sheen combination on Stick Days Ezreal. Remember, we've seen the Tristana Ezreal matchup so many times in the meta right now. Rainover getting himself back away from Ryu and Meteos here. But that Tristana Ezreal matchup, Ezreal's looking for that mid-game power. Tristana going to be very scary as this game scales later and later. TP's coming in. This may just be the fight, <laughs> but oh, they're out of there. The magical journey right back over the wall. Medios with the instant flash. I am out of here. And they do have the extra teleport. That's why it occurred. Uh, someday had just used his shoes back to top side, so he wasn't going to go. Oh! oh. Very 
nice. That's... Who needs a stuff? Exactly. I'm okay with that. I'm okay. If he would have just cast that, turned into a golden statue, and got away, uh uh. But that, that was all skill. 6 8. Now might be in some trouble. Pops his own golden statue, trying to get away from this one, but a very nice salty. Meteos bonks him with the jack stick. And now, can they find another? Biofrost flashed his way over the wall, trying to get out from this one. The blast cone's gonna be taken by both him and Cody. The stun won't hit the mark. He's all out of summoners and all out of time. Cody Sun grabbing the kill. Yeah, he does get the kill in the end. He jumbled a little bit of that tower dive there. But in the end, Hunch of Thieves grab the tower that they've been working at for the last eight minutes. They're able to get the kills and they're gonna get this mountain drake. Take oh, that he wins the race. Exactly like you're saying, right? You want to see the outplays. You want to see the skill here. Ryu doesn't need no stinking stopwatch. Get he that out of here. He the ultimate, gets right back in, and that was a beautiful escape. Meanwhile, bottom side, Afro move, magical journeys in, flashes over to try and get 6A. Then, really, really nice with that ultimate there. Does not skip to uh, take the power damage out of the equation. So that even though Cody's done, yeah, he holds him away before he died there, and the heal comes in. We see that a lot where the heal bait kind of yeah. uh, causes a lot of problems for Lee Sins and Tristanas alike. Oh, yeah, all sorts of fun in there. Any sort of mechanic that knocks the guy away from you. But, yeah, I talked about how Bard's fun to watch because he's going to do something really good or really bad a lot of the time. Well, that was really good. Perfectly placed all the time out there from Afro 100 feet. And now we're going to take this objective advantage up a notch as they will. Jungle pretty much even. Enemy with the package though means that 100 thieves have to be careful about what they try to play, how aggressive they try to play. That corny package, if nothing else, is just a slow down kind of a sign. It's a yellow light saying you better be careful. I mean, it's a giant horn too. You got this uh, <laughs> warning horn that comes out so everybody knows the yellow light is here. Slow down. And yellow light in League of Legends means you actually stop. You right. don't rush through the this, yellow light. This isn't the yellow light that means speed up. This is the yellow light for what it's supposed to mean by traditional traffic law. Slow down. Safety first, friends. Exactly. Drive safe out there. Who he? Gonna be knocked back by Cody's son. Trying to grab plenty of damage there. Nearly kills the CLG mid laner, but a couple more auto attacks would have been required. You know, back as Baron spawns up, so yet another opportunity on the table. This should be a chain reaction of turret gold. Uh, just flooding into their base right now because top lane they've got three members they can push this one down then they can transition over to mid and once you get this full outer ring of turrets advantage that's when 100 thieves can start to look for the jungle invades you know aframu here on the bar trying to create the plays and pick people off in transition with seeing those objectives that's what I always look to see a team do. As soon as all three of those outer turrets go down, oh. set the vision up. A rain over coming here into the mid lane, looking to stop these guys. Videos on the front line, jumping backwards with the counter strike. Rise ulti gonna take him a portal out of there. Afro move, nice stun what? onto two. Gotta give him the mastery emote after that or something. Nah, this is all just a regular day in the office for Afro. <laughs> bar, bar for the there. Bar for the course. He's been doing a good job on that champion here so far. One week. Tragically, don't we see a lot of these days, but two, two. Uh, down there. Uh, uh, uh. All right, he gets X out. Zero is the X name of the game, by the way. It's I like that one. I still want to see that interaction we were talking about having to drive right through the rise Sweet portal, but. <laughs> That's I mean, I'm not sure like the, the best case for that, but I know it's a good case. It looks really, really cool, and we want to see it on air. I actually also want to see it look really dumb, where he pops out on the other side of the portal and runs into the wall. Ah! Right into the enemy found bumps and stuff. It's right. the, so there's the plenty of possibilities, Kobe. <laughs> there's plenty of possibilities. I love the ultimate in the game that looks like a genius or a complete dumb guy. That's what I'm talking about with Bard. That's we why? throw Scion in that same category. So that's why I play a lot. Because the looks like a joke. Cody's done here. The game. He's baiting. See if he's baiting too hard though. Cody wants to get out of this one. Instead, the stun yeah. finds its way onto Afro Move. Not enough tricks in the book to get him out this time. Yeah. 30 seconds on the death timer. CLG pushes up. Cody's done had a nice little combo. Oh. 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 
outer turret lead the difficult part for me is always the transition because you want to reset get back to base and purchase with your gold lead but in the resetting you usually will give up a lot of territory where the other team either lose vision tempo. exactly tempo is a, a word that people use quite often uh, sometimes it gets a little bit muddled but good ultimate here from rain over he throws it right past the tristana uh, and hit Afro Sometimes you argue about, oh, he was aiming for the Tristan in there or whatever, and he got lucky, but nah, nah, nah. Again, time goes to the runner. He was aiming for the Bard. He hit the Bard and secured the kill. All right, speaking of secures, Meteo secures the enemy red buff there as 100 Thieves move into CLG territory. Living up to their names, stealing Your away those buffs. Has been destroyed. You can see Stixa trying to make an effort to get away with the two shot barrage, but sadly he doesn't have his Apollo cosplay on, so no stealing away those uh, neutral monsters with the control. The media is still hanging around this Baron buff. You can see vision control of this area being exerted by 100 Thieves. This is what we were talking about earlier, Cody. Having that entire outer ring of turret down. to deliver and they want Akron to be the recipient, but he's kiting back into his own jungle here. And CLG is going to move their own way. I would expect them to actually secure Dragon um, with that extra pressure, but it looks like they're spreading back out, just sending who's to top and going to 1 3 1, split it, get the minions pushed back out first. Someday continuing to farm up there in the side lane. Frozen Heart did get completed along with the Abyssal Mask. Which, even though Scion doesn't do a lot of magic damage of his own, yeah, he's an Aurobot. Old school style, but oh, Ooh. Afro move, not having a good time on that one. Cody Sun now in a threat from Puhi in the one versus one there. Doesn't want to take that fight right now. Got Ryu behind him, but still has to disengage overall. CLG with a pickup for themselves, but what do they do with it? Well, he's going to get stunned up, but they should be fine. Meteor's having a retreat after that one. Does a little bit of damage onto Puhi, but nothing that's going to stick through a little bit of fleet footwork. Blowing up the blast cones just to make sure that nobody has any extra passing routes as you move through the jungle. But that's something I always try to do. That's something I always look at when I see players invading the enemy jungle. And when you come across the plants, get rid of them. Just, uh. Burn. 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 flowers. Play Starner only. Definitely, uh. Thematic. Garner doesn't have any dash, I don't even dash with the blast stones. I'm not used to playing with these advanced mechanics. Get rid of all of them. No jumps. I'm still curious about this Cloud Drake, though. Uh, I feel like a lot of it was stalled out because Afro Move keeps getting hit with these uh, really well placed Rain Over Ultimate. Rain Over keeps catching out this one ult. Garner definitely is a hard that, but it's kind of uh, stalled it out for transition from full out of ring to uh, any sort of mid-game control for the objective. CLG now actually the ones with the gold lead themselves. They've started peeking here. We've got the double Trinity Force. Uh, the Static Shiv has already done for Corky as well. Oh, here we go. All Once right, again. starting off, but Afro Moo is going to be caught right there at the start. Stix A going to be taken very low here. Not quite going to die the explosive charge. CLG still going to make some more moves. Meteos counter-strike up and running, but it's Ryu who's going to be in a bad spot having to flash away. Stun comes through. Biofrost looking to lock him down, but he will not have the damage in time. CLG ends up walking away one for zero on that fight. Yeah, that was actually very close. Stixay almost died through the explosion right there on top of the head in a counter kill. But in the end, CLG walk away with a single kill on the after And they get some more here. Not quite enough follow-up there. CLG keep finding these small victories, but what are the prizes for the small victories? Well, you yeah, get follow up that bro, let it be the leaving the team. Uh, Alright, it's funny <laughs> that it all it's funny that it's rain over who, who's the one catching him most of the time here. Uh Six Eight took so much damage by the way because the RP just did in to finish that kill on Afro move. Uh,
three items just on a power spike where this champion starts to really come online, really become that huge transitioning into late game stretch. Two zeal evolutions, one infinity edge. This is where things get scary. This is on the table. Fully evolved Rushing down the Baron's DLC, not anywhere nearby. Not yet the secure from the UK. And the reason they went for this rush, they had the timer on the uh, teleport. They know that Nar showing up in the bottom lane is a huge oversight to the DLC in the game allegation. 28 minutes into a game versus team that as a mountain drake, you can't be sending your Nar bottom and giving up vision of a teleporter champion right over the bear, so Takes it very low. Tarek Alti coming through. CLG looking to make this fight happen even further. Video's nearly dead. Who he trying to make the move does end up securing that kill. Turret goes down though. Darshan actually the one to grab the 300 gold for Medios' death. That's a huge counter strike from CLG grabbing the uh, kill onto Medios here. The Baron up team pushing a little bit aggressively and they just jumped right on him. Finishing up the extra kill and putting a very quick stop to that Baron empowered push. That's one of the best things you can do for yourself, honestly, when your opponents have that Baron, when you feel like you've kind of lost control of the game, when the momentum is theirs, getting that kill is going to shut that down so quickly and just allow you to get your footing. That feels so good for CLG. They've got room to breathe a little bit here. Yeah, positioning is so important when teams get a little bit of lax. We've seen punishment very quick here uh, from both sides, honestly. Still a lot of deep vision that was left behind by Hedge of Thieves up in CLG territory, so it's not the worst thing that has happened they still have some time here with the Baron buff and there's an infernal drake on the way so they're trying to transition a lot of their resources down to the infernal drake which will be the next big objective that pops up control wars go down they're trying to get full awareness here on the bottom side of the map infernal drake still about four minutes away so 100 thieves knowing that they've got Baron for about another 60 seconds or so want to at least transition that into this tier two here they're going to set up shop, allow Cody Sun to get a few auto attacks into that one, utilizing the, both the range and the damage of the Tristana. It's nearly level 18 at this point. Only two more to go means that that range has had time to build up through the passive. 100 Thieves, though, we talked about this team and CLG, too. Honestly, at the beginning of this game, the macro was what we were looking at. Looking to see these teams rotate better, maneuver around the map better, coordinate better. And so far, I believe this game, it's been 100 Thieves who have had the better rotation, who have played better around the map as they're able to find the stun onto who he ran over, looking to move in, maybe find some CC here. Ooh. But very nice ulti from the bar, going to be removing a lot of the effect of that Tarek ult, as CLG's going to lose one right at the outset. Biofrost going to make it two. Someday still looking to lock down even more. The Rise ulti comes in. Darshan going to be CC'd up a little bit here. One more auto attack, will not be able to find him in time, but CLG in full retreat with the three remaining members, health bars, blinking red. Aphromu gets a little revenge there in the form of a team fight victory, and that is also gonna be in the form of an inhibitor turret going down, probably the inhibitor soon to follow. 6A comes out to try and answer though. CLG need to try to hold this line as long as they can. That bottom lane inhibitor is the one that you want to lose the least of all. Darshan landing the boomerang onto Ryu, but it's still a three versus five. CLG, you got to be careful about these things. There comes the Scion Express, but Sunday <laughs> ends up giving a killing spree over to Huhi. Darshan may still be looking for something here, decides against it. 100 Thieves lose one and back away. Whoop, the Daisy got baited in there. Someday does uh, take the last stop, but <laughs> in the end, they got what they wanted. So this was so, so close right here. The Terrick Ultimate coming down. Uh, Aphromoo actually the Bard ultimate a little bit earlier, um, 0.5 seconds maybe, would have been able to nullify more of the Terrick ultimate, but it was really just to keep them in place because the tower only had one more shot on it. 
So all Hundred Thieves wanted was to keep them in place a little bit longer to finish up these kills for the re-engagement. And that was very well done by them to gain control of the bottom side. They still did leave the inhibitor up, though. And now it's another fight and another catch on to Aframu. Death number four this game, Kobe. They are showing no mercy to their former teammate. Man, Rainover is a man on a mission. He's the new shot caller, and he's going to make Aframu. Hey, old shot caller. I'm the new shot caller. I'm calling the shot to take you out. They are not letting this guy survive any chance they get, keeping him down as much as possible. 2-1-5 and five on Reign over Sejuani. Yeah, it's also the fact that Bard is a squishy champion and a great target for picking out. He's a little bit less squishy than normal. He has an Iceborne Gauntlet and a Negatron Cloak. and That's true. It's a bit of a different build from what you would normally see, but he has had a couple of fantastic ults so far. So Aphromu is the expert on Bard here, not me. I am not here to judge Aphromu builds. I love Sheen-based items. I just get lost after I see the little penguin meat spawning around. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Even they are the so best meats. Let's take a look at the uh, next spawn. That inferno we were talking about and a lot of the vision that Hunter Thieves put down maybe about a minute ago. Um, some of it still last here in the blue quadrant of CLG's jungle, but a lot of it is being cleared out. And CLG have started to retake a lot of territory over here by this objective. Gold's still very, very close here, so the team fight definitely could swing their way. It's, it's about can they time this Nara ultimate? Can they you know, start it out with the uh, Rainover Sejuani stun into a well-timed Terran ultimate uh, that doesn't get negated by a bard? And I'm really enjoying the fact that this game that we were looking so heavily at the macro has now become so close because these teams have gone blow for blow. It's coming down to the micro. Let's see how they play it out now. The stun in the lockdown. The Bard ulti to buy some time for someday. He pops the shield. He's still going to be taken out. Six A grab the kill on that one. CLG looking to kite themselves back until the dead body goes away. Package delivered straight into the river. They're about to time out, so they can't really get any more use out of that one. Moving towards the Infernal Drake. CLG sees an opportunity, but at the same time, you've got to respect that Baron will be spawning only five seconds from now. 100 Thieves showed they could rush it already. You don't want to give him that opportunity the second time. Instead, who he solos down Infernal. Now all of CLG can work together here. Who he coming up over the wall, trying to grab something here. Ryu going to be forced to burn two summoner spells. Get himself away from that one. That's a definitely a very big swing in momentum. Counter Logic Gaming capitalized on another great engagement from Rainover. You said Juani ultimates have been very well timed. It was perfect with the Narbar charging up. And now with the extra man advantage, they're starting up the Baron, forcing 100 Thieves to come to them. All right, the Thieves have to try to fight this one. Video's going to be forced away by Huhi there. A lot of damage coming out from the Corky. Someday going to use the TP, working his way in. Baron down to 2K. Video's wants in to look to be able to steal this one out. Can he do it? No! 6 they on a killing spree there as 100 Thieves cannot stop the Baron. Scion trying to get himself away. Rise will take the portal. Ryu and Someday both getting away from that one, but it's CLG's day. Everyone took their own route home. Bard, oh, actually oh. re-engage. Okay, 100 Thieves still looking to make the moves. It's Afromu that sets up the stun. Darshan goes down here. Two fantastic moves from the 100 Thieves support. The crowd said it perfectly, Kobe. That was so close. Pretty tight on that one, Biofrost. The Baron of Power Recall does complete it, but 100 Thieves not letting CLG get away without an answer there. What a re-engagement from Aphromu. Recognizing awesome. the double recall had already taken place, they still had the numbers. This game has been a back and forth. Definitely a long one here, and we are not near the tipping point yet, even though the Baron buff still remains uh, for half the members of CLG. Look at this replay here. Bard ultimate into the double Bard stun. Just so, so nice. It's been highs and lows for this Bard pick from Aphromoo. He's constantly getting picked off from Rainover's ults, but still he's making big Bard plays. So definitely a double-edged sword so far. these two teams. We said it at the start. Four and five, three and six. They're both hanging around that area that's just on the cusp of being eligible for playoffs. When it's this close between all these teams, we can talk about how awesome of a match this is, how it's back and forth, blow for blow, but at the end of the day, somebody walks away with a win on their record. Somebody walks away with a loss. And that can end up determining who gets to go to playoffs and who doesn't. No matter how close it is, no matter how much 
you and your opponents are easily matched, you've got to find a way, find some advantage, find some weakness in what they're doing because every single one of these matches is worth so much right now with CLG pushing up with that Baron buff trying to break the tier 2 line. That's some Vin Diesel speech stuff right there. If you win by an inch or you win by a mile. Yeah. Well, CLG Fast goes for an furious, but Afromu dodges right. it this time. Yeah. Cody's son going to be taken low, but who he? Dying to the crit. Can they find anything else? Darshan going to be locked up now. The counterattack from the Thieves is full force. Furious Afro move. Grabbing the kill onto Biofrost. There comes your portal. Stixay running for dear life, trying to get away from the five man collapse. Ryu, Cody's son, Afro still in hot pursuit. Cody wanting to go <laughs> over the wall here. Can he find anything? Yeah, he's finding his buddy Darshan over here to lead him the way through the forest to the other side. Hunch and Taze. my hand, I'll show you the <laughs> way. Chasing him. Someday, still after this one, Darshan gonna be bound up in the rune prison. Destiny oh, not quite finding the mark. Ryu still trying to chase after this one. CLG, our escape artist. Are you kidding Look at me? That. Darshan Ooh. walks forward, dodges this IR knockup, gets his hyper proc, walks right back out. Two of them do escape. Let this should not overshadow that 100 Thieves just got a very good engagement, though. No, no, no. Cody Sun completely popped who he there. They get the explosion and a very nice chase down. Even though then right on their back foot, still DJ gonna come up around and escape. But here's how it started out. Afro flashes this one. And then they make a huge play on the Huhi here, who tries to 1v5, but oh. Cody Sun with the crit, able to take him down, and that means someday's coming for it. Train right down the middle, gets the hard engage, and the extra kills are picked up. Great fight from the Thieves. Great retreat from the remaining members of CLG at the end of it there. Again, just reinforcing it's blow for blow every single time. Neither one of you is wanting to give away this win here today. Elder Dragon spawning just over a minute now. Two Drakes on the side of CLG, one on the side of 100 Thieves, and a tragic Baron power play of negative 402 gold for CLG. Generally, Baron power plays are they were too positive. Two but, gold uh, off from the 404 Baron power play. <laughs> but when your guys die right as you pick the buff up. It's generally hard to make money from that one. Yeah, can't say much except unlucky after that one. That or maybe who you know 1v5 next time. Afro yeah. is looking for another pick though. This game has been constant. Openings being capitalized on very quickly by the other teams. Seems as soon as they make a good play, uh, the other team is quick to catch them out. And now, they surround it on all sides. He does have a package here for CLG. The 100 Thieves are looking for it. Gotta be so careful with that package. He creates such a massive zone of control once delivered. Two shot barrage fired off. Stick Sage is kind of looking to find any extra damage here. Elder Dragon still 15 seconds away. Baron just under two minutes. You get to the point where they're both up, you can make a trade in those objectives. But when there's only one, that's the name of the game, Kobe. All right, package expended. Thieves feel a lot more comfortable. Tricky rush. Nope. I'm trying to keep my eyes on the big initiation tools here during this walk. All right, overhead. there you go. You got one. Rain over. Look to go in right now. Someday, get to the one who eats the ult at the start. And they find what they're looking for. Nice four-man decimate. Darshan gonna be the target. Someday too, still getting himself away. Somehow still alive. Nobody dies on either side. The tanks absorb so much damage. Trading a lot of cooldowns here. Bard ultimate for Tarek ultimate. Re-engage opportunity is there for Darshan. He has teleport on the Nari. He's coming back in a defensive teleport though. And they might just try and use this positioning to go for that Elder Dragon. There's another 57 seconds left on Baron. So no trade is available right now. CLG seeing 100 Thieves a little bit far up. Counter-Strike already going to be used there from Meteos, taking a magical journey through the Wraith Wall to get himself out. Well placed by Aphromoo, making sure they don't lose their jungler there. Would have almost certainly been giving away Elder Drake if they did. CLG has priority over the Elder Drake area. Now looking to make a play maybe once more. Rainover has the ulti yet again. Someday locked up. Unstoppable as he tries to escape 100 Thieves. Got to be careful with this one. CLG having the advantage for now. Afro Moon not landing the stun. Yeah, 100 Thieves are taking a beating here. The health bars are definitely in the advantage of CLG, but no kills have landed, and you still have to respect the damage possibilities from them. Someday does have his War Mods. Heals right back up on that Scion, even though he had to use his ultimate. 
and won't be able to get the cooldown back. This is just back and forth and back and forth and so many engage attempts, but the top lane, the top lane being pressured by the minions. The minions are more objective focused in this game than the teams themselves. <laughs> Minions have been pushing top and bottom for both teams, trading turrets. Another inhibitor turret about to fall here on the bottom side. This one for CLG. The minions doing work while all the players are trying to five on five. Minions MVP. The players are marching down mid lane to fight each other. The minions are the ones split pushing. Everything's topsy turvy this time around. Another rain over ulti. This time finding its way onto Afro Moon. That's your kill. Way easier to kill him than it is to get someday. Darshan, Meganar finding nothing. 100 Thieves now, four versus five. Elder, live, Baron, live, CLG. Someday, Looking to grab someday here, the stun, yeah! <laughs> he ain't live no more. Stix A grabbing the kill onto him. The passive not gonna do a lot right here. CLG now deciding where they wanna go with this one. They've got themselves 28 seconds until Afro moves back up. 100 Thieves might be baiting a trap right now. Hoohee. True Shot Barrage comes out if they get Huhi. That's gonna be real big. 100 Thieves still having a chance to stop this momentum. It never ends, Kobe, it never ends. Stick safe, low on mana. Already popping the Arcane ship. Meteos can't quite find a Counter-Strike. He doesn't need it. The Rune Prison on the mark. Stick safe still looking to run away. Meteos has another stun ready to go. Not quite gonna be finding it just yet. Stick safe on the run. Meteos on the retreat, nearly brought down, but not quite. They stop the Elder 100 Thieves. Somehow get away. This is the meta I like. The 100 Thieves counter logic gaming meta, where they are just going hard battling all game long. 44 minutes into the game, we've it's got 300 gold Baron is the next target here for 100 Thieves. As CLG pulled off the Elder Dragon and went back to reset, there's no vision for him, and 100 Thieves in the end are gonna claim it. They rushed it down once, why not do it twice? What a play from the Thieves. Now they've got themselves set up. They've got push power. They've got control. They've got a whole 800 gold lead. Look at that That's flock of lot. penguins, too. They, they got a bunch of damn penguins following that bard around. There's got to be at least six of them in there. <laughs> All right, now they're going to be a powered penguins with the extra oh, elder Burn, up. baby, burn. 100 Thieves have every tool on the rift in their pocket. Elder Drake, Baron Buff. Penguins, if you can't win with that, you're gonna be hard pressed to find a way. They've got two exposed inhibitors, thanks to the two minions we were talking about before. Let's see what they can do with it. CLG are gonna be on the defensive for a while. All right, set me up here. We have some defensive vision for Counter Logic Gaming. They're the ones in the tight spot. They're trying to clear up They're trying to buy some time here. A lot of these buffs here for 100 Thieves are gonna give them a huge advantage, but who he with the package has the confidence that if he sees any sign of initiation, he just hits that panic button, goes with the eject right back up the lane, and he'll be able to escape. So he goes and gives some more dangerous mission wins uh, to try and buy themselves a little bit of time. Every minion wave, another 30 seconds is what that's gonna buy you, and that is very meaningful. That's, that's how CLG are living right now, 30 seconds to 30 seconds, but 100 Thieves are looking to come end this sucker right through the bottom lane. 18 minutes ago, I talked about how Tristana hit her three item spike. Now, Tristana at six items, not one of those is a boost. Cody's son is very, very threatening right now. You give him free fire time on his body, it's gonna hurt like crazy. CLG, quite a task in front of them, positioning five men strong to defend the exposed inhibitor. But against an Elder Drake, it's harder than ever. And again, there are five members here at the standoff, but look at the minions. Counter Logic Gaming minions have a triple stacked wave heading for another turret. So 100 Thieves, they just want to ram this inside the base and finish it. The battery ram finds its way onto the inhibitor, but not any further. The Magical Journey says 100 Thieves are back and away from this. They've got the double buffs. They're now going to time out with just one inhibitor taken. 100 Thieves actually gonna go for a reset here. Looks like they don't want the minions to finish off the secondary turret. Uh, I mean, top lane though, is in another exposed inhibitor and this, this temporary power of a Baron plus Elder Dragon is not gonna be long lived. These things are gonna time out very quickly here and CLG are gonna get another chance. 50 seconds left on that for 100 Thieves. If you're CLG and your opponents have both Uber buffs on the map and all you need is a single inhibitor, I call that a win. All right, well, they've got another swing at it. 40 seconds left there for 100 Thieves. 
With the extra fucking power, the elder is gone. But the Baron remains. Combat power is significantly lessened. Out that burn. And it comes down to stroke. Who is going to get the initiation? Rainover has had Aphromoo's number most of this game. Finding him with constant ults, but now Aphromoo has a QSS. So maybe he takes it Maybe he gets it. out of it. Let's see. It all comes down to the individual outplays, the mechanical skill. This is how I want to see the game decided. 100 Thieves, DLG base, Baron expiring now. And a bunch of minions for 100 Thieves on the bottom side. Super minions helping out. Very slow, very cautious. Realizing they've got the advantage. Somebody ulted it. Can't afford to be ulted. Push back onto the inhibitor now as Darshan comes over trying to deal with those super creeps pushing up. Thieves still not willing to go for any kind of a crazy engage just yet. We'll get stick hit towards out the arcane ship. Thieves seeing a little bit of damage there onto the inhib. The stun comes down, finding its way onto Videos, but it's going to be rain over in the front line, taking the brunt of the damage for now. Taric ulti out is a massive cooldown. Very well played by 100 Thieves. They know they've got the minions working for them, and they kite out the Taric ultimate. Now they just have to finish off the inhibitor. 100 Thieves playing the macro game right, being aware of where the minion waves are, being aware of exactly how far they need to go, how far back they need to stay. Now they're getting themselves back with two lanes of inhibitors down. You can back up, get ready to push up yet again. This is what we wanted to see from this team, Kobe. This is this team working together as a coherent unit, making plays across the map as well as individually. We've seen the Bard ults, we've seen Cody Sun do the damage. The man's got 10 out of 10 KP, no deaths. And he's got full items, as you said, a while ago. So farming has no effect for the AD carry here for 100 Thieves. They just want to get into the base, run it straight up the mid lane here. And again, patience is key. They have to have cooler heads here at 50 minutes into the game. Double super minions march to both sides there for them. And they just need to put pressure on counter logic gaming and force the move out of them. Counter Logic Gaming found themselves in a similar situation yesterday, being out macroed, stuck inside their base, and just losing inhibitors, being forced into a situation they could not win. Now it's 100 Thieves stepping up, putting them in that same situation yet again. And for CLG, you've got to ask yourselves, can we get out of this? Yesterday we couldn't. Is there a way out from this one? It's a difficult situation to come back from. They are really close to the football hold. They have to jump on any opening they see. Rainover gets the slightest angle on one of those carries. He has to take it. The time is working against COG. And 100 Thieves are happy to make him feel the burn. Ezreal 2. Six items on this AD carry, but it's not quite a Tristana. Reeve is going to get some trouble. Rainover goes to the flash hole. He flashes the way to the there as well. Now Rainover rooted up. 100 Thieves will move in on this one. Meteos, though, going to be dissuaded from going any further because he was taken so low. No Scion ultimate used here from someday, and CLG with a little loop-de-loop -loop buy themselves some more time. They clear out the minions and haven't lost any more structures. Honestly, that's a very good defense for counter logic game. 100 Thieves, though, they sent Ryu back to base. And Still at it here, trying to get back out on the map. At this point, 25 seconds on Baron means they're gonna take this next objective and have to push with purple. So happy with this team, Kobe. They got the 100 teams out match for their opponents, take over the map, do well in that regard, but CLG controlling the defensive situation well. It's a very difficult hand to be dealt, but they're playing it as well as you can imagine right now. But you've got to defend against another Baron. After a move for the guard ults. Rainover comes over the wall. Someday the only one in range for now. Aphromu trying to get away from this one. Has the QSS, but now it's going to be the back line of CLG that may be in some trouble here. Biofarm having to pop the ulti. 100 Thieves backing themselves away. The damage coming in. CLG, plenty of offensive power here. The redemption comes through. Someday still going to be tanking. Stoneplate active. Videos hops away, CLG going to claim the victory in that fight, but remember, War Mogs are going to be ticking. Yeah, the front line is sustaining him pretty much, but Afro is sustaining him. The Bard will be low. Also doesn't have just the space to use on this Baron, so it gets burned out. Baron going down very quickly. Videos are going to be oh, 100 Thieves! With the very important steal away, Cody Sun going to kill a double. Who he might just be the triple. Come on. 
Rumble. And 100 Thieves are going to be able to take that Nexus right afterwards. After that entire game, the climactic steal here ends up in an ace and a victory. What a showing from 100 Thieves on a micro perspective, on a macro perspective. They outplayed CLG and deserve this win. And for Afro move, Let's not do this right. is revenge oh, yeah. part two. <laughs> this is now twice he has defeated his old squad. And you can't say that he wasn't instrumental in doing it this time around either. So many bard alts that were clutch in allowing 100 Thieves to make the plays they did and get to the point where they controlled the map in the way that they did. And even bigger than that, the victory here for 100 Thieves after starting off the season so strong and lulling here for a little bit the past couple weeks. Definitely going to reinvigorate the team as a whole. And definitely invigorated me and the rest of the audience here. What an action packed game. Glad I had three water bottles. Rainover was landing ult after ult after ult on that Sejuani. Pulling up picks for them. Sweet. Kept it very, very close. You can't say it wasn't a valiant effort. CLG, they put up one hell of a staunch defense. They were not going to go quietly as 100 Thieves took over the map. But at the end of the day, so much damage from Cody's son. So many plays being made by Afro move. Honestly, the bottom lane from 100 Thieves seriously impressed me here today. The whole team working together well as that unit, like I talked about so many times. And Meteos at the end, the steal that wins the game. Yeah, it was the steal and the fact that after that steal, inside the Baron pit, they completely wiped the team fight. That was one of the most decisive team fights of the entire game, the very last one, because all members of COG were clumped up on this Baron, focusing on getting it down, and once they were caught inside the pit, uh, the kind of clean sweep there from 100 Thieves on top of the steal uh, made a very exciting entry. You couldn't ask for much better of an ending than that, but now we're gonna send things down to Omni and 100 teams support Afro. Thanks guys, Afro what a way to end that game. Picking up another win against your former teammates. What does today's win mean to you? Uh, obviously a bit of fun for me. The past few losses, but uh, good win for us at the end of our belt. And I'm happy about how we played. Now there were some incredible team fights in the mid lane most of the game. What was going on for the team? That game I had six deaths, so they could really only kill me. It was a little rough. Uh, that was my bad. But uh, in the team fights, once there was a lot of uh, things we had to go through, which is like if they engage, I'm going to bar ulti, they're going to tear ulti back up. You know what I'm talking about? So it's like very scary and like a fine line we had to play on. So I'm just uh, happy that we all played really safe and the times that they did pick me off feels really bad. But uh, they had a really good team comp, so it was hard to play around. And speaking to the slump that you mentioned before, in a pregame interview, Medios mentioned that he felt frustrated with the way that the team was playing and unable to find one play style. What do you think is the reason for that, and how are you addressing it? Uh, I just think we all have to get on the same page in terms of uh, how we want to play. We got something in top lane, really, not sure we're playing carry top laners and stuff like that. How we're going to work around that as a team. Uh, Cody Sun as well, you know, wants to play aggressive. I want him to play aggressive too. So it's all about a balance and it's about us actually uh, working on those things. Maybe more specifically, oh, how would you say that so in-game in uh, decisions are made? Uh, everyone has really good calls and uh, there's a lot of time actually in the Legends to uh, make those calls, but most of the time when there are the split second decisions, uh, whoever can figure out what's the most important thing that we need to focus on in that moment, uh, usually I try and look for that most of the time. But uh, everyone on the team is pretty good at doing that, and all that matters is uh, how we want to play from the beginning of the game. And awesome, and congratulations again. And for more on the game, let's hear from the analyst desk. Thank you, Avli. 100 Thieves breaking a four-game loss streak there with the win over CLG, which coincidentally pushes CLG to a four-game loss streak. But in all reality, this was a messy 
messy game from both squads. And uh, 100 Thieves, lucky to be the team that kind of comes out on top of it. You gotta watch this. Everyone pay attention to the glass cone and stick safe autoing it. Because even if you're gonna do this, the plan for the COG was to get out the back. But watch this. They shift over and stick safe auto the glass cone. Killing the rest of his team. It means Dark Sean has to flash out. It means Rain Over is done for. And that means they can extend this game uh, even longer. It was it was going to be rough uh, for a lot of it. And I think we were kind of commenting during this game that this is how 100 Thieves wins. They don't necessarily beat you. They just keep the game going long enough so they don't lose. So they have the worst uh, time spent with a major gold lead, and they have the slowest average win time. So if you look at that gold graph, you see just a heart rate monitor. Uh, it's crazy stuff was happening. The patient is game. very much still alive. 71,000 damage by Cody. Did not flatline. <laughs> Did not flatline. The patient is alive. <laughs> yeah, Cody Sun, once again, in any game that 100 Thieves wins, it goes forever. He eventually turns into Cody 1, carries the game. That happens again. But like we we're saying, longest average game time for wins, as well as having the oh lowest time with a uh, major gold lead. So 100 Thieves, like we we're saying, they don't win games, they outlast you. And that's where like their veteran. Uh, uh, status kind of kicks in where like the game is a mess and they slowly just make a couple better decisions over the course of the game than their opponent. In a sense, it's a battle of attrition, right? right. Basically just going to outlast you in the game and you after them calling it out. The phrase that he had for his yeah. team was their ability to, to take the, pick, the singular pick, only give up that one kill, play it safe, wait for their next opportunity. On the flip side for CLG, kind of struggling to make anything of those individual picks, right? They, they get Aphromoo, now what? Well, it's because they were Sej alting Aphromoo as well. So then they're never going to have anything for the follow-up initiation. Right. And their wave management was bad, so they were never able to actually see the turrets afterwards. And then their objective control was also lackluster because they were trailing into the fights. Like, it was in the middle Baron fight where he got picked up and put his Cool. Right, and Mark, this is where I want to take another look at the standings as we move into the back half of the split. Take a look at the fact that we've got a 5-5 five and five 100 Thieves and TSM rounding out those fifth and sixth spots. But where I feel a couple days ago we were saying playoff picture feels relatively secure, all of a sudden there's some teams that are very much in danger at that level. Yeah, a number of upsets happened over the course of today. It's basically upset day two, and now Golden Guardians have a real chance to start pushing up here. They're, they're sitting one game back between two teams once that final game of today happens. So, right, they have a lot of ground to make up. TSM is following the standings. Clutch Gaming stepping up. Team Liquid falling. It's, it's a complete reordering the past week and a half. I can't believe there's why'd you believe in CLG I thought or you TSM who's four and six like the league is partially upside down and then even the teams that we thought were gonna be as you mentioned the sixth place playoff, playoff teams is completely uncertain Golden right. Guardians at two wins Optic uh, at three wins with a chance to go to four if they beat FlyQuest would suddenly be tied with TSM for playoffs right yeah, no, 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 I'm with you. And if you look at even two, look, those two losses that they make, makes it all that much scarier. Because 100 Thieves has already lost to Black Quest and Golden Guardian yeah, nothing is underneath them in the standings, right? So if you if you just take you know recency and history into account, the the repeat games against Ooh. those teams underneath them in the standings become that much more important. Man, yeah, because you can see the losing streak. It's not like they were. Playing You're not losing to Echo Fox, yeah. C9, and Team Liquid. You're losing to teams below you in the state. Two, two yeah. of the teams below you in the standings. And I think this is uh, a very scary thing, not only for teams, but for Jat and I's predictions. Because <laughs> we, <laughs> we're zero and four today, Jat. Yeah. Oh, don't worry, boys. We'll get there. Oh, we're there. Oh, we're so so there. far today, you guys are zero and four. I was four prediction. and one yesterday, guys. Hey, so that's that's true. That's still. True. Negative for the week. All right, but so, here's the deal. I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to change your mind ahead of the fifth game. And Mark, you changed like, your mind? I changed my mind. I believe in my analysis. You do not have strength but prediction. I, but my question. No, it's I believe they'll win, but I don't want to see both of us go 0 5 today. So I'm willing to put myself up there. And so that way, at least yeah. one of us is guaranteed to go one and four. <laughs> Mark is leaping in front of the bullet. I'm Who trying to save the analyst desk from going zero ten. I'm, I'm like, no, Jan, if you get this wrong, we'll, be, we'll still be okay. I will have gotten it right. Flip, flop. I just trust my analysis. For good, for good, for good reason. Yeah, yeah, exactly. there it is. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Okay, got it. well, then ahead of that fifth game, 
now that you have gone and flipped floppity, how do you how do you call the victory for to be, uh, Profit? To be fair, I think it's actually a lot closer than like uh, it was clearly a fly quest victory that right. coming. Uh, Optics are looking a lot better. Power of Evil and Arrow are stepping up. It feels like they're finding their play style. Where top lane gave him a counter pick, good matchup, leave him on an island, and then focus elsewhere on the map. Yeah, and I'm just super happy that fly quest put stunt back in finally. Yeah, that's a. I think they're change. so much stronger with that setup. I that's a really good point. I hope that they still have the synergy left because I know it's really difficult for teams in special environments to be constantly. I mean, this team's played with a different jungler, different mid laner, different support. Oh yeah, they've so, been. They're one of the few teams, the only team that's really stunt. utilizing the uh, the sub roster, and we'll see how they do with stuff back in the lineup. Got to play with your turn. You've got to find the game today. Five plus. Stop the game after that. Three because Alien Zyrene will take to the stage for NALCS tonight, and we'll have an opportunity to answer some of your questions. So tweet them. Your queries using the hashtag NALCS. No question. Tries to use the ulti to get himself away from right. over, popping the flash to interrupt that. Immediately the CC coming down. Someday trying to flash over the wall. Now though, uh, Ephraim with the early ignite. See if that ends up mattering too much here. Stick say starts to chug his potion and heal right back up here. That will be a Potion lead for the AD carry is Cody Sun still holding on to his. Meanwhile, top lane someday getting the push with his Scion. And Darshan does ward for the classic jungler Krug trade that we see a lot of the times to see if the enemy jungler is coming up. So you uh, you don't want your jungler to fall behind the camp early on. Yeah, losing those Krugs pretty par for the course these days. Nobody likes to take them during the first rotation through the jungle. They're just so slow. They're so time consuming. They feel really bad, but. When you move across the map and the only thing that's left when you can't gank the enemy guy is Krugs, you're like, eh, well. Exactly. We see them trade Krugs when Krugs are the only thing left. That's pretty much the rule of Krugs. If there's literally nothing else to do, you can do Krugs. Yeah, it goes from tier one is Raptor Camp. That's where you start. Yep, and that's then the now, though. Uh, Ephraim with the early ignite. See if that ends up mattering too much here. Stick say starts to chug his potion and heal right back up here. That will be a... Potion lead for the AD carry is Cody Sun still holding on to his. Meanwhile, top lane someday getting the push with his Scion. And Darshan does ward for the classic jungler Krug trade that we see a lot of the times to see if the enemy jungler is coming up. So you, uh, you don't want your jungler to fall behind the camp early on. Yeah, losing those Krugs pretty par for the course these days. Nobody likes to take them during the first rotation through the jungle. They're just so slow. They're so time consuming. They feel really bad, but... When you move across the map and the only thing that's left when you can't gank the enemy guy is Krugs, you're like, eh, well. Exactly. We see them trade Krugs when Krugs are the only thing left. That's pretty much the rule of Krugs. If there's literally nothing else to do, you can do Krugs. Yeah, it goes from tier one is Raptor Camp. That's where you start. Yep, and that's then the now, though. Uh, Ephraim with the early ignite. See if that ends up mattering too much here. Stick say starts to chug his potion and heal right back up here. That will be a... Potion lead for the AD carry is Cody Sun still holding on to his. Meanwhile, top lane someday getting the push with his Scion. And Darshan does ward for the classic jungler Krug trade that we see a lot of the times to see if the enemy jungler is coming up. So you, uh, you don't want your jungler to fall behind the camp early on. Yeah, losing those Krugs pretty par for the course these days. Nobody likes to take them during the first rotation through the jungle. They're just so slow. They're so time consuming. They feel really bad, but... When you move across the map and the only thing that's left when you can't gank the enemy guy is Krugs, you're like, eh, well. Exactly. We see them trade Krugs when Krugs are the only thing left. That's pretty much the rule of Krugs. If there's literally nothing else to do, you can do Krugs. Yeah, it goes from tier one is Raptor Camp. That's where you start. Yep, and that's then the, the bottom of the barrel are the Krugs. Meanwhile, mid lane Ryu uses a lot of mana, but he gains this lane priority. You can see him. Uh, posturing very offensively in this lane, uh, super far up, trying to deny Huhi a little bit and eke out some more pressure. Meanwhile, Darshan does go pretty uh, aggressive himself with the hyper proc. Yeah, talking about positioning yourself very far forward, just getting up on the very edge of the turret range there to make sure that someday is not allowed to have any more control in this lane than absolutely necessary, Sejuani up there taking those Krugs and that ward. Yeah. Gonna spy that out. That Krug trade is taking place now and look at that nothing else on the map that's the only reason they're just cleaning it up they've also placed some of the early vision you can see a lot of it is focused on the top part of the map here uh, between mid and top lane and so that means the bottom lanes are just gonna continue to farm Aphromu actually still in the bottom lane he was you know looking for some more of those cues constantly forcing Stixay to dodge as well as 
you know, think about his mystic shots that he's trying to get out there for the CS. And it has started to take its toll. There are a few more minions on the Hunter Thief side. Uh, so Stix A can catch up a little bit, but definitely a nice little lead there for the bottom lane. Yep, small lead for them. You've got about one minion wave's worth of lead in the mid lane as well there for Ryu up over who he and top side. Someday's actually going blow for blow with Darshan, which considering you're up against a Nar, you're up against a champion that it's expected for him to get a lead. That's fantastic. And Nar did use the teleport first, so Darshan went back. He got the long sword and the extra Doran item along with some more sustain in the form of potions. And someday now technically does have the teleport advantage, but probably should be that way equalize. A little bit of a stun onto Cody here. Takes the damage of his own as the explosive charge is strapped up to the top of him. Now. And this is the situation that you want if you're the Hunter Thieves side. When you're drafting these lanes and you're looking for the, the early pushes, they have now Afghan Acadian in mid lane, Power of Evil. In bottom, it will be Arrow supporting him, Lemon Nation, and Coach Zabutin on stage. Really do like his uh, bow tie, by the way. The, the coach's style is definitely going up the next level. You gotta, if you're gonna be on stage for only a little bit of time, you gotta make sure you flaunt your Not the game, though. Coming into this game, not only after a great game over Golden Guardians, that was a lot of Gs, but after seemingly <laughs> figuring out how they want to play the game. They want to play the game good. There's a couple more for you. Power of Evil and Arrow, big carries for the team. They've been designated as pretty much carries for all of the team compositions. That's the way you want to play right now in the meta anyway. Zig, meanwhile, on the top side of the play. So a decent amount of Nar blind pick and a lot more safe and tanky kind of front liners uh, for the team. And then Acadian as well on actually a wide variety of circuits. He's played some aggro junglers. He has also been one to play the likes of Nunu um, and the more utility and frontline junglers as well. We did see Optic as well transition their early leads into the late game goodness. Uh, it's definitely a good sign of the league overall, and it's something that they, they really wanted to work on, and, and they kind of promised as far as their march towards playoffs. You want to continue the climb for playoff positioning. There's no better opponent than FlyQuest, who are just one win above them in the standings. FlyQuest, they did look uh, a little bit weak once Fly's champion pool was uh, banned out. It was more than just a pinch. It was about four or five bands they threw at Fly in mid lane. And mid lane bands are pretty common right now, but specifically these roaming champions, the Talia, the Galio, the Aurelian Soul, pretty much everything was checked off. Um, and then, it, once that style was removed, it seemed to be uh, a little bit more difficult for them to figure out how they wanted to play the game. So they're going to have to come up with a little bit of backup style. Uh, one good thing for them, though, Stunt, I think he's coming back, and that's something that helped them as well. They've, they've practiced a lot with this guy. I really like Stunt's play that we've seen him on stage in a lot of his games. So uh, I think that is going to go positively for them. And as you can see on your screen there, a little bit of the stack comparisons between them. Higher KDI, KDA, excuse me, higher kill participation, Legendary. and more wins overall for Stun. So has a better record compared to his counterpart in JJ there. So FlyQuest hoping they can add yet another win to that collection here today because, as we said, they are one win ahead of Optic. This is another one of those examples, similar to what we were talking about with just the very last match, where these two are neck and neck. This could really determine whether or not you go to playoffs. Everybody, the end of the split. now is the time to get down and dirty. Yup, no more holding anything back. No more of those conversations we were having a couple weeks ago about, oh, you've got time to turn everything on. They can flip the switch a little bit later. Just let them settle into their groove. Well, it's if you don't have your groove now, you better find that groove quick. The switch has been flipped. All right, Oriana ban, that is a Power of Evil target ban. Uh, for people not familiar, definitely one of the most played champions, super comfortable. Had the Nashers tooth, they got him out of fame. Um, regardless though, that one has been uh, pretty much a mainstay for a lot of teams up against Optic Gaming. Aside from that though, no further mid lane bans come in from FlyQuest, whereas Optic Gaming do take out at least the Zoe. They're not comfortable as some of the other teams have been in trading the Zoe for the like here. you do been the case, I'm not gonna be seen here though. All right, well, Zoe band away, Oriana band away, Orn, Callista, Galio, and GP gonna be the other bands in the first part of the draft here. And unsurprisingly, and I can't honestly believe I live in a world where I'm playing this, Obi, <laughs> Skarner will be first picked by FlyQuest. He has risen 
with the speed and force of a shooting star up to the top of the pick and ban list. So if he's open, he's almost immediately going to be picked. He is on that. We'll be piloting. You're really on this Star Guardian Skarner here. I, I you keep dropping, dropping hits. subtle hits. <laughs> I really want that. That would be cool. But on the other side, Optic Gaming, they're going to respond with Brom and Sejuani, the Freljord special. Freljord special packs a lot of crowd control. That's the best thing about the special. They stack up stuns <laughs> with two different passives. The they, have, we they have ultimates that also control. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of DC as well as tankiness already locked in on the Optic side. Meanwhile, FlyQuest, very quick answers here. There's actually a hover over of the Caitlyn from Optic, and uh, FlyQuest don't want to mess around with that one. They seem to have hit a hit a nerve there. So FlyQuest grab her up for the bottom lane for Wild Turtle. He definitely has a long history on the champion. Actually, Wild Turtle's first game in the North American LCS when they he took Chaos's to spot way back in. Man, that, that's I'm going way a back game here, I buddy. haven't heard in a long uh, he time. He played Caitlyn. He got a pentakill, and that's your history back to the day. The old man. Well, Professor today, not a very quick question. And now, we're back to Champion Select, where one of the best ways to deal with a couple big meatballs is some long range, high damage output champions in Game of the Year, like you mentioned. The response from Optic Gaming, Arrow, gonna be once again breaking out that Draven. And last time around, I was definitely in on the Draven thing. I was like, okay, this makes sense. Into Kalista, no short range, he's gonna have their power autos. Yeah, 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 yeah. But versus Caitlyn, Caitlyn typically, uh, with the extra range, uh, has been able to try to out him, try to try poke at him, yeah. Uh, so I'm very interested to see what the Draven Brom lane can come up with here. Uh, oftentimes, uh, that will be a lane that goes for early plays, early kills, because of the crowd control. So maybe it will be an Acadian visit down there. Try and get some jungler support. Use the Frel Yord duo uh, to try and cash in for Draven and give him this big gold lead that you'll want to get when you're stacking up your adoration. Well, Optic Gaming did choose to ban away two lifesaver type of supports from the side of FlyQuest. No Taric ulties this game, no Tom Kench Devours, so a couple of tools that can be used to keep Turtle safe will not be available. FlyQuest, instead focusing more on the solo lanes here, Victor and Camille both banned away. Yeah, Camille definitely a high priority ban uh, for a lot of teams. Oh, that, uh, other are than that, most sick. of the tanks start to take over the top side. We do have uh, Gangplank on the ban list as well. So top lane has been considerably whittled down. And I think the Optic actually are pretty happy with that. They're saving their counter pick for Zig just in case though, in case Flame's got any tricks up his sleeve. Well, a lot Not of tricks. <laughs> Not a trick. It's just dark. You can see a lot of dark. Jonathan, the supporting Wild Turtle. If you don't have those pick you up and carry you away in his belly of Tom Kench, the invulnerability of the Terra, you go back to one of the most established heal supports in the game. Yeah, she definitely is established as a heal support. I love it with the composition. They have knocked back with Azir and with Janna uh, as far as keeping Caitlyn safe. However, in lane, I'm looking at that Janna as a kill target. Oh, yeah. the eyes get big. So Draven, <laughs> Arrow here, Lemonation. They're probably going to call down Acadian yeah. for uh, some sort of support and look to get some kills there. Other than that, though, if if Jenna and Caitlyn can keep their range, if they get the time and they get to just poke you out, they keep their range, they they play defensively, you don't get any hard engaged flash plays on them, and that can definitely start to get annoying. They will poke you down. Uh, it's mostly about will the enemy team be able to get that surprise play? Can they get the flash? Can they get the uh, you know kill pressure? Because that will definitely start to snowball. All right, we've got another game with Scion in it too, so that's going to be fun to see if he can get any of those big ultis in there and make a huge impact in the team fight And there is plenty of DC potential on that Optic Ross. Sometimes all you need is one big sting from Skarner to have all the to really get to fight and make things happen on the side of FlyQuest. We've got the Gnar at the top of the so especially once he gets going. Really difficult to deal with in the head. Let's see how these two squads fare against each other. Again, both three and six. Very close in the standing. Both still hanging out in that area where you could get yourself into playoffs if you have a good second half of the split. And part of that is beating these teams that you are in direct competition with. Yeah, both these teams have had some struggles. Legendary. They're very different. FlyQuest was rotating a lot of the roster. We had... Uh, you know, Fly not over quite early enough, so they pulled up Keen from their academy team. 
They also pulled up JJ, as we've seen in the last couple of weeks, as the support role. But now it feels like they've settled on this. Um, Anda in for the jungle, no more shrimp. Fly in the mid lane for sure. And uh, stuck now. Finish off the weekend for them. See if this final roster does actually settle down for them. Much needed victories and uh, team tied in the standings. Meanwhile, Optic Gaming is talking about the hard work they're playing. Outwork their opponents, and they have had some tough beats in these special ones. Close games. Now it has been out. Predator is starting to seem to be a favorite. Yeah, plus uh, the nerfs to the rest of that tree. Uh, the utility tree also getting the stopwatch nerfs, the uh, boots nerfs. Well, combination taking some damage. There's your early poke, and that's the kind of annoying part of the lane that I talked about. So Caitlyn, long range. Janna also can do a lot of damage with the W after the changes uh, to this champion. She usually runs airy, and they can really force you off the minion waves, take control of the level game. And that's where they want to keep it. The team with the hard engage, though, the Draven and the Braum, they're the ones that want to switch it up with the jungler and the minion. <laughs> my eye on because sometimes it's, it's something that you see whether it's a it's a Hashin Shin thread or whatever on reddit people talk about like oh you have one of the on the side of the four range champions the jungler getting involved or not could decide the way that goes so make his move towards bottom side left to see if he can get arrow and elimination going top and put some damage here in zig Lays down the decimate dig, blocking that glacial audience on the Zion. So, he's activated the little bottle. Yeah, and a big part of that, uh, if you haven't seen it, is right after he gets back up, the zombie Zion with the glacial augment. It's a huge slow on melee champions, and uh, he can just get a lot of counter kills because he's so fast and uh, he basically purpose slows you. Yes, so watch out for that one. Once he dies, the danger's not over. Got to make sure you're playing around that dead Scion properly. We've seen a couple of teams do that pretty well so far. And flying quest. Make sure they're successful here. And uh, moving over, stealing the enemy Krugs. We talked last game about how Krugs feel really bad to make. Krugs get an extra bonus feels bad, man. Garner, because they're the only camp in the game you can't do with your Spire. Yeah, but at least you can proc your E on a bunch of them and you get your, like, little moment of happiness. You're not a big moment, it just feels really bad. Uh, try to you will steal them away. You will steal them lining here with you, buddy. All right, all right, we gotta, we gotta think positively. Yeah. We, gotta, we gotta always look for what's gonna be good about this situation. And for Flame, what's good about this situation is Aww. maintaining total control over this lane, keeping Zig very familiar with the sight of being underneath his own. Yeah, unlucky overjump there, just out of range. Minion doesn't get that last hit. Meanwhile, Arrow's actually doing very well down here, uh, not taking too much of the CS deficit as they got poked under turret and they gave up, uh, you know, control of the wave and the level lead and stuff. But stacking up his adoration, out of the last hit, and the jugglers are actually colliding on the mini map. Go down so everybody's aware of both their positions. Just a little bit of the early Your team is Predator was actually used by Onda there as well. Uh, picked up the boots for himself and then used it as he ran there. So Katie and wanted to make it all by first out get it. Garner's actually an incredible duelist. He can fight him inside one of the Spire zones. So Katie wanted nothing to do with that, got himself away. Goes back to his own farming up those camps. Lightquest has actually built himself up to make 600 gold lead though, just early on in the game by farming that. Flames a little bit here the jungle, and speaking uh, of the jungle, and Onda's gonna invade. Don't believe he completed this fire, but he's still gonna take oh. the fight. He 
still says you're a Sejuani. I must garner that's flashing over the wall, but I'm still in some trouble. Optic collapsing oh. on this right now, and Onda goes too far into wanted, enemy territory, uh, brought down. I, I think they wanted to give that to Arrow so he could catch it. Yeah. Uh, but then a little bit too much health is left over there, so Power of Evil says, I will take this very much. And that is also going to boost Syndra towards the level six, and she'll have more items when he goes back to base at that level six. So it is very well spent as far as the gold going to the mid lane here. Uh, use that ultimate for the lane pressure. That's a sending uh, event. Yeah. So I want to test it out. Ah, how much damage? Okay, I got a feel for it now. Now next time, next time I'm going to send it back to his base, black and white. Five years right now. 40 ETS to 45. Let's take another look at Onda's overextension here. Yeah, so he's taking the Spire, then he panics. Walks off of it, doesn't finish it. Blast Cone used by Acadian is very good. And even though there's a level lead, he's got teammates. It's a team game for the Flowers. And Lemonation and Arrow were early on the room. Up. So they. So their turret looks more hit. They lost the game. Yes, they're going to that. And it's a now yes, for. Well, Caitlyn now, and the Secret is still there. One to zero, 10 points to the end of the Lane pushed up so incredibly here, bottom side. FlyQuest could very easily take this first turret down here very soon, unless Optic sends some kind of relief down here to help the bottom lane out, whether it be Acadian, whether it be a Teleport from Zig, or Power of Evil rotating down. Something's got to happen here, because they're in some trouble. And even if they do, all FlyQuest has to do is match. Here goes possible all-in, maybe if that Q had hit. Uh, not going to follow it up, though, and Stunt gets out alive. Here comes some more tower damage, and here comes some more FlyQuest members. Oh, the Predator's been activated. Anda's got the ulti. He's on the hunt. One more hit onto the turret's going to set things up. He goes for the Braum. Elimination in some trouble here. No way out. Goes home with a death timer. Fly grabbing the kill for himself. And we're seeing why the Caitlyn used to be so often picked into the Draven. Uh, this was Arrow choosing that one, but the Caitlyn Janna, that one's going to push down your turret. They get the first turret bonus gold. They also got the bonus kill on the support there. Feels good, man. Because Optic Gaming did not respect the room here, and you also got some value out of your Predator from Onda.